hi everybody welcome back to the quarter acre homestead we're gonna do another vegetable garden tour today uh, we have a family of five that we feed from this garden it is right now June 13th we are in zone 9 in southwest Washington state so we're gonna show you what's what's growing well what what we're having a little bit of trouble with um, what we've been harvesting also, we are trying the back to Eden method with wood chips all over the garden. So we'll give you an update on how that's going. So we'll just walk through the garden starting here. Um, these are our, these are our snap peas um, that have been going for a couple weeks now. We've just been coming out and eating them off the vine. We have two varieties here. Um, I can't remember the name but one of them has these purple flowers and a lot of these tendrils that you can also eat the other one has white flowers and is a little bit flatter these pink ones the peas are kind of round the other variety they're more flat like this other variety is a flatter one they're both tasty and we've been eating them so let's walk this way. So this first bed here, we have our kohlrabi, we have some volunteer squash, some turnips, volunteer tomatoes. We'll probably pull some of these things out. Volunteer sunflowers. So this is probably a Russian mammoth sunflower. Um, this one is different, you can tell because of the purple on it. This one has colorful flowers and they're smaller and it has multiple sunflowers on the stem. We're going to use some of those for chicken food. Some of them will probably soak in salt water and dehydrate for snacks for us. Moving along here we have our pepper plants, sweet peppers here. One thing we've been having an issue with this back to Eden method uh, is the slugs really like it. So we're getting a lot of slug damage. You can see all these holes being eaten in our pepper plants. We're getting lots of holes even in our corn and our green beans, which we've never had before. In the past, the garden is just dirt and I guess the slugs don't like crawling over our, our, our land our dirt is kind of sandy and I think that bothers them so we've been having a pretty hard time with slugs this year I just walked down our green bean row picked off a few slugs that I saw in about a minute and a half they just hide in the little wood chips and wait till evening or when it's damp out and come out and eat our stuff but peppers are doing good. Onto this next bed, we have some pink celery here. Haven't harvested any yet, it's still growing. This is a new variety we haven't grown in the past. We have a couple broccoli plants. This one here, I think the chickens keep coming in here and eating, so it's not doing the best. So this is our daughter's bed. So she has lots of different flowers. More volunteer sunflowers. She has a, three or four tomato plants. So you can see right down here there's a actually a tomato coming right there and lots of blossoms. So actually five tomatoes here. Um, later on, I know it, it is June 13th and I really want to plant more warm weather crops, but it's just been cold and pouring rain. You can see everything's damp. So like, I'm holding off on cucumbers, but later on cucumbers will be on, on the back of this bed and we'll have them trellised up. So next bed here, this is one of our boys so more volunteer sunflowers you'll see those pretty much everywhere in the garden this is red orac it's kind of a, like a like spinach and we've really been enjoying that we've been harvesting that eating it in our salads um, over there we have 
pad soy and bok choy. Um, I think the purple one is a bok choy and the green one's a tat soy. Um, this is probably a tat soy that went to seed it looks like. So we'll probably be cut it, taking that out soon. Um, a few more pepper plants that we we kind of just planted the peppers where we had space because they were one of the last things to be planted. Back over there we have sorrel. Those leaves are a green sorrel which has kind of a sour flavor. We've been harvesting that. These are new plants this year but we have another plant right behind us here I'll show you. This plant has been in the garden all winter and we've been harvesting quite a bit. It's going to seed now, so it might spread all over the garden. We'll see. Okay, next bed. More tomatoes. So tomatoes in every bed we've been to so far. We, we planted 30 some tomato plants, but we also have lots of volunteers. Um, uh, let's see. I won't tell you all the varieties we have. Maybe we'll do a tomato harvest video later on, but our favorites are Sun Gold. We have probably three or four Sun Gold tomatoes, which is a little orange cherry, really good flavor, and also Green Zebra. The Green Zebra is our favorite for flavor. Um, down here we have beets, several different varieties. These beets we started in little cells, little cell trays, we put we put three seeds per cell and let them sprout up and then planted that whole cell in the ground. And I will show you, especially with our soft ground and the wood chips, they have kind of just pushed each other apart and so you can see there's three beets there and they just continue to push each other apart as they grow. So that worked pretty well. We have more orac here. This next bed is a pretty long one, about 16 or 18 feet long and we have, I don't know, probably 20 tomatoes in this bed. Um, down there in the front we have our one of our favorite one of our favorite varieties of lettuce, this is Tom Thumb. This is ready to harvest right now. Um, you can see because of how filled out it is, it's going to start sending up a shoot and going to seed if we don't pick it soon. Um, we also have some more little Tom Thumb plants that we'll plant out soon. This is Wild Rocket Arugula and it is really spicy and none of us really like it. This is the first year we've tried it. Um, really spicy flavor and I've read up on arugula and there's some other varieties that aren't so spicy so we might try that another year. So this we've just been mostly feeding to the chickens or maybe we'll compost some or something. So this bed again has like 20 tomato plants. Um, we have some more lettuces. We like growing lettuce, especially as it gets warmer. We like putting lettuce in behind the tomatoes so the tomatoes shade it because lettuce does not like the summer heat. So, so this next bed is our main lettuce bed. We have the one you see the most of there is butter crunch lettuce with the round leaves. And then this red one is a really, really pretty one. Uh, this is called Merlot lettuce. It's all kind of frilly leaves. Um, this one here is Italianischer, I think is how it's pronounced. And it can get up to 18 inch long leaves. Uh, and then we have some more Tom Thumb over there. 
And then one more variety here that I don't know the name for sure. I saved that from a variety mix that I grew like five years ago. So it, we've been growing it since then. Um, let's see what it, we have over here. We have an herb just starting out. This is lavage, which kind of tastes like celery. It's just getting started. And then we have a bunch of kale here and more volunteer sunflowers so we'll we we trim the leaves off these sunflowers to let the sun into the plants underneath but again we want a lot of sunflowers this year to feed our chickens the the seed heads so we have red russian kale here um so this one with the red veins this is red russian kale it's one of our favorites we've been growing for years um i believe we saved this seed so it's well adapted to our climate here this is scarlet kale that we got from baker creek and this is a dinosaur or te tuscan kale that we this is our second year growing that one Down here we have some cabbage plants, two or three different cabbages, cabbage varieties, and then also beets mixed in there. So that's the end of that bed. So next year we have some leeks. They're pretty small, just getting started. Um, I can't remember the variety. I will. Put it as a caption problem when you start growing so many vegetables is you can't at least i can't remember all the variety names next here we have i believe white star bunching onions so they look really good they're growing nicely and then we have three different varieties of onion that we got back in probably february or march um we got these I don't remember. We got them as like sets uh, from a company, a big company that starts them down in Texas. Anyway, we have three varieties. We have yellow Spanish, which is this end, Copra, and we have Alyssa Craig. So these onions are growing really nicely. Um, you'll notice all the wood chips, and I told you. This is probably three months into using wood chips on our whole garden and we're, we're really happy with the results. We did, we are feeding like some composted chicken manure um, and different fertilizers as well and our soil was already pretty rich um, with compost. We also put compost down underneath when we planted um, but things are doing pretty well other than the slugs. So here we have a bed in front of our greenhouse. These four plants are zucchini. Um, back in the back we have more sunflowers. We have yellow crookneck squash, which this is, seems really early to me to have squash, but we have squash coming right here. There's like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven yellow squash I can see right there on that plant. There's another one back there. So yellow crookneck squash is one of my favorites. Um, next here we have several, several more squash. I believe these are sweet meat squash and we will have them, the vines grow up in this lilac bush that we have here and the squash just hang out of the bush we have a little broccoli plant there again the chickens are coming in here and ripping these leaves off that's what's doing that oh i skipped over this this is a tuscan kale that we let go to seed so we're going to let these seed pods dry out uh, the reason we like saving our own seed is this plant is now accustomed to our climate here and so when we save the seed those seeds will be well adapted and grow well right here in our our little specific climate. So, uh, some more squash here. We have 
kabocha squash. Um, you'll also notice these mushrooms. These keep coming up, so we're getting mushroom compost in our garden for free. Um, then back behind here we have Atlantic giant pumpkins, which we started indoors, I don't know, back in February maybe. And then we grew them in this cold frame with a sliding glass door over the top for about a month, maybe in April. And now they're just going crazy. So we have, there's a little pumpkin right here. I don't know if we'll keep that one or maybe we'll keep the next one, but we're gonna let this vine come out here into the lawn area. So let's head back this way to the other side of our garden. So this is our greenhouse. Um, we did quite a bit of work in here this year. You'll see wood chips on our path in here. Uh, built some raised beds out of some redwood timber that we milled at my sister's house. We have eggplants growing inside of here. Um, we have basil in between. So we have, uh, I'm not sure all the varieties. I know we have lemon basil. I think this one's the lemon basil. Um, we might have the big leaf basil. But anyways, three different varieties of basil. Eggplants are flowering. Volunteer sunflower again. On this side we have some volunteer tomatoes and two different melons which I'll try to put those melon varieties as a caption I don't remember those we have more basil coming up here and then this lemon verbena plant we grew from a cutting this year uh, we started about four of these and this is the only one that lived so we have to perfect our technique on that So this is our main lemon verbena plant that we just bought this year. Um, so it's our first year growing it. My wife and kids really like the smell and making tea out of it. And it's, it's a lemon flavor so you can use it on like salmon and different things where you want a lemon, lemon taste. It smells really good. Uh, the squash here I believe is Geet Aksamim. Or, I don't know how you pronounce it. but. It's an orange one from Baker Creek that's new for us. All right, so this bed here, oh, by the way, I should tell you, the reason I look different, different clothes and stuff is our camera, it only takes 20 minute videos and so it shut off and I finished the video and then we realized it wasn't recording. So we were at this point, this is our kind of perennial bed, so we have quite a few artichoke plants here. Um, some of them have been here for two or three years. We have gotten probably like 40 artichokes this year and there's about, I think only that one left. We are leaving that one to attract pollinators, bees and things like that. So in this bed we also have down here some chives. These three are new this year. These are from last year. We do have some annuals also, so things that die back in the, in the winter. These are basil and they don't look very good, I think because it's been cold and rainy and they like hot weather. Um, also in this bed, we have things like kale and um, I guess let's walk around this way. So this is kale going to, or no, this is uh, celery going to seed. Kale, we pulled most of it out. We have um, some more orac coming here. Um, some parsley, some rhubarb under there. Um, let's keep going this way. So here's some new artichoke plants coming that'll have artichokes next year and I cut some of the big old artichoke plants off because they were shading what's going to be our corn patch. So, also we have some more 
baby lettuces coming here that we'll plant out when our other lettuce dies and some little sorrel plants this is I think I don't know what it is some kind, some of, kind of blood sorrel red sorrel so we that's the first time we've grown it here we have some starts coming and more slug damage um, these are different squash same kinds that I already showed you we'll be planting more of those and then cucumbers also with slug damage and some dill plants coming over here some more sunflowers coming because again we want lots for our chickens and then this is our corn patch so we have three rows of ambrosia corn on the far side and then these are three rows that have been planted maybe five days ago but again it's been raining and cold so i'm a little nervous they're not going to come up but i was afraid to keep waiting because uh i don't even know now it's like june 18th or something so it's getting kind of late for corn so i planted them hopefully they'll come up and we still have some more space over here where we will start some more corn we have another variety called stowell's evergreen that's an heirloom that i've read you can hang up in your shed upside down with with the corn cob still on it and just pick them when you need them throughout the winter so that'll be interesting to try um the other thing i'll mention about these wood chips is um come over here there's Every morning when it's wet, a bunch of these mushrooms come up. So you can see some coming maybe for tomorrow here. And they just come up and then during the day they dry out and fall over and make a mushroom compost for us. So nice that we get free compost and basically every morning that happens. So then we have our green bean row here. Blue Lake pole beans that we really, really love. Um, and then we have a second row that we just planted again like five days ago and they are starting to come up. We have mostly Blue Lake, but we also have some yard long beans. I don't remember the specific name, but we have a few of those coming. Okay, so that pretty much sums up our main vegetable garden area. Um, we do have different vegetables and berries and fruits growing here and there around the whole homestead. Um, if you've watched the last few videos, you've seen a orchard tour, you've seen a berry and vine tour, uh, but we also have like herbs around our back deck. Um, I guess I'll show you real quick. So like down here we have more chives. We have an edible flower. This is borage or borage, I don't know. Um, you can eat the flowers, you can eat the leaves. They kind of taste like... Uh, cucumber. Um, I've heard the leaves are good in soups, but I have not tried that yet. This is our first year growing it. Um, so we have lots of those flowers coming. Um, over here we have three different varieties of rosemary, I believe. Yeah, three different rosemaries and more oregano. Um, on the other side we have chocolate mint we have thyme we have some tom small tomatoes growing on our deck in buckets more sunflowers blueberries grapes sage sage um, on the far side of our house we have one raised bed where we're growing potatoes and actually let's run over there i'll show you so this is our sage this is new this year a purple sage um, up there's our buckets of tomatoes we have some different small bush varieties the kids like picking the little cherry tomatoes off the deck there and then over here on this far side a few videos ago we made a video on building a raised bed and in the long run we'll put several raised beds back here in this corner of the yard 
right now we just have one and you'll see our potatoes have just gone crazy so we've pinched off a few of the blossoms which puts more energy into making nice sized potatoes these are our sunchokes so they have a root that's kind of like a potato but more crunchy and you can eat it raw in your salads and things like that so this is our first year growing these I did have some experience when I was a kid these will take over your garden like if you rototill every little piece will grow a new one so and it gets really crazy so that's why I have them in a raised bed so they're kind of contained and hopefully they don't get out so that's basically what we have growing okay so that's it for the vegetable garden tour if you enjoyed the video please give us a thumbs up um, if you have any questions comment down below let us know what you're growing, what new varieties you're trying. Um, we've been getting some new Patreons and new subscribers, so thank you for the support and welcome to our channel. Um, next video, next video is coming up. We will have um, some more chicken coop build videos and also we are excited about an automatic chicken coop door opener and closer. So, uh, basically using just the chickens to power their own door that opens and closes and is predator proof so make sure you're subscribed so you can see that video we're pretty excited about it um, that's it for today so god bless you and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.